Hello friends, how are you? I hope you all are good. Now, in this pandemic, already, uh, see, in classroom, we already covered some basic part from our class 9 standard. Okay, now, whatever today is, see, in today is, we are going to discuss periodic classification of elements. So, whatever prior information regarding periodic classification of elements that we already covered means a whole periodic table okay we draw we draw this block p block d and a block elements okay with mnemonics also i gave so better you have to revise that all mnemonics okay in that again if you are facing doubts then you can share okay so see here periodic classification of elements now see what will happen. See in 17th century, see in the beginning of see, in the beginning of 17th century. What will happen say in the beginning of 17th century? A very few elements were known. Okay. So it was easy to remember them all that elements. Now, now what will happen? A huge number of elements were increased. Okay, so then what will happen? The discovery of these huge elements. So at that time, what will happen? It became very difficult to manage their all properties, physical properties, chemical properties of that particular elements. Okay. Now, after that, what will happen? To work on this problem. Scientists work on that and the system. And well, at that time, yes, at that time, what will happen? It leads to the necessity of what periodic classification of that elements. Okay, because of discovery of huge number of elements, there is a need of what classification of elements. Understood? So, suppose if you are considering historic development from periodic table, see historic. Development of development of periodic table. So as you know here, say here in historic development of periodic table. In the 17th century only, what will happen? Levels are classified elements into their metals and non-metals. Okay. But after the discovery of very large number of elements, their classification in small groups. Task. So we can't arrange that elements in that particular group, okay, uh, in ordered manner. So there also we need to classify that elements, okay. So means uh, if you are observing, beta so periodic table in today's form, okay, whatever modern periodic table you are uh, observing, okay, it is in your anxiety also. So, it is the outcome of efforts by following eminent scientists. So, see which are those eminent scientists. Say, first we can write here John Dalton Ward. See, what we write here? John Dalton. John Dalton Ward. So, see here, John Dalton Ward. He published. So what he done? He published a table of relative atomic weights. So whatever I am saying, you have to write in your notebook, and whatever uh, notes you are writing, you have to share. Okay, personally, understood. So John Dalton, what he done? He published a table of relative atomic weights in 1803. In, uh, in 1803. Which, we, which was the form, which formed the base for the classification of elements. Which formed what? Base, basic thing for the classification of elements. Okay. So next we will see here, Robert and I tried one. Okay. What we got for next? Robert and I tried one. So what he done? See. In 1870, in 
in 1870. So when I classify limits in a group of their okay, how they classified? They classified them in as a tribe. Okay, what we can call as a as a tribe. So what he done in that he done a middle element. Say a middle element how the atomic mass say middle element middle element at the atomic mass nearly equal to nearly equal to the arithmetic mean of equal to arithmetic mean of other two other two elements other two elements when they will arrange that elements in reading order of atomic masses okay so whatever each and every sentence i'm saying here that you have to find in your notes okay so go to open and drive one thing so John Dalton Park. Okay. See here yeah, how it will arrange. So Dobin I have to identify only three triangles at that time. Okay. From the known elements. So see here, yeah, which are those that Dobin I have one. See. For example, so we can write here. See, as an example, try. Try. In that examples as a your lithium, then sodium, then potassium. So already I give some data regarding this. Means atomic number, then their symbol, electron configuration, valency, valence electrons, then charges also are here. Okay. So we have to write this frequently, we have to revise this frequently. Understood? So see here lithium. Which imagine atomic mass 7, here got 23, here got 39.9. So here, atomic mass of middle element is uh, nearly equal to what? Arithmetic mean of other two. So how? See, 7 plus 39.9 divided by 2. So your answer become how much? Is 23. Understood? So nearly equal to atomic mass of that middle element. So second triad, suppose if we are discussing here, second triad. I hope you are concentrating and you are writing in your notes. Okay, chlorine, chromate, iodine. So see chlorine, chromate, iodine, what will happen? 30 by 5 and atomic mass, then we are on the 380, we are about 127. So what will happen? See, thirty-five point five plus one twenty-seven divided by two. Then you will get what answer nearly equal to eighty. Okay. Now see third triad. So see in third triad, what will happen? Your calcium. Okay. Then strontium. Then barium. See calcium as you know forty. Strontium right now here it is 1.6, it is 1.6, and here what 137. So, what will happen? See 40 plus 137 divided by 2, nearly equal to what 88 point something you will get here, and so So, these are what whatever atomic mass of middle element is arithmetic mean of other two elements. Understood? So when it occurs, we say arranging in the order of atomic masses. So I hope you understood this or whatever Dobrin and Triad work. Okay. But here what limitation is there? Limitation is what? The law is applicable to limited number of elements. What we have? The law is applicable to limited number of elements. So that limitation also you have to mention properly in your notebook. See, we will discuss next thing.
of Newland's law of Higgs. See, Newland's law of of Higgs. So see here, what will happen in Newland's law of Higgs? Okay. See, in 1866. In 1866, Newland proposed a new system of grouping of elements with similar property. He proposed a new system of grouping of elements with similar property. So, according to him, according to Newland, what will happen? See, when the elements are arranged in order of their infinitely The elements, okay. When the elements are arranged, are arranged in increasing order of in increasing order of their atomic masses, okay. The properties of every element. Properties of every eight, eight element is repetition of the first one. Is the repetition, repetition of what first one? Understood. Repeatedly means whatever every eight element is the similar to the property of First one, understood. So we will write here as a, as you know, our uh, this uh, tones, musical note. We can uh, say as a musical note. See here, beta. What he done and how he done. We write down octaves. Say. So as you know, beta, this uh, a, the. Okay, 2,6 oxygen atomic number what we have? 
Yes, I do know about oxygen and how we can write two normal things. We know so what? 16 is not circular. So, two normal, eight common six. Like that, they are resembling in their properties. But after this, what will happen, Vita? Some limitations also there. For this, your new land stop of fame. So, that Vita limitations also you have to mention. It is very much important. Okay, so how about typical uh, limitation, say, that limitation we have to mention. First limitation we can uh, write, it is relevant only for lighter elements. It is relevant only for what? Uh, lighter elements. So second we can write here, law of optimum was applicable only up to calcium. And after calcium, every element did not possess its properties. Okay. Not possesses property similar to that of first element. If you are observing, after calcium, it does not show in some similar repetition of their chemical or physical property, we can say. Okay. So uh, after that, it will what? Fail. This theory also, Miller's law of P also fail somewhere. Understood? After limited level, it's okay, but after whenever the discovery of elements is going on at that time, what will happen? We need to some work means we need to work more and to uh, to busy. Understood? So these are what we are new lines of things. I hope you understood this all. Okay. See, after this, uh, we will discuss Vida. See, Mendeleev periodic tables. So very much important to know this. Say Mendeleev periodic table. Mendeleev periodic tables. So here in Mendeleev periodic table. Okay. So what the founder of this uh, periodic table say? Dimitri Mendeleev. Say what was the name of that scientist? Dimitri Mendeleev. So in deep entry mentally with the word Russian chemists. What? Yeah. Russian Russian chemists. Okay, so he arranged elements on the basis of their atomic masses. Okay, arranged elements on the basis of atomic masses. So when the mental started his work at that time only 63 elements were how much? 63 elements were known. So, among chemical property, Mendeleev concentrate form the compound formed by elements with oxygen and hydrogen. Whenever uh, Mendeleev doing his work, at that time he only concentrated on what? Yes, concentrated on compound formed by the elements with oxygen and hydrogen. So, as you know, why he selected hydrogen and oxygen? Because these are what? Yes, these are what we are highly reactive and form compounds with the most elements. Okay, your hydrogen and oxygen they are forming compounds with most of the elements. Okay, that's why he selected. And after combining with this hydrogen and oxygen, we call it as a say, when we combine with hydrogen, we call it as a what we are hydrides, and when we are combined with oxygen, we call it as a what we are oxides. This two. Okay. So see, uh, what will be the Mendeleev periodic law? So it is also uh, very much important Mendeleev periodic law. So we have to write this properly with good handwriting. Understood? What will be here Mendeleev periodic law? So see, it stated as it stated as. So we can write like this. So here. The properties of elements. See, the properties of elements are the periodic function of the properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses of their what we atomic masses. 
Okay, so we will maintain a periodic law. The properties of elements are the periodic function of their what atomic masses. Okay, so see here we will discuss here characteristics of Mendeleev periodic table. Characteristics of Mendeleev periodic table. So here very much important is part characteristics of Mendeleev periodic. See so, yeah, what will happen? So you have to mention uh, that point you know, characteristics of see characteristics of Mendelio periodic characteristics of Mendelio periodic table. Okay. So you can take here, you can take as a, an example of Whatever periodic table he won in your NCRT. Okay, so see what will happen here. That first we will discuss with now what is the actual content of this periodic table. So I assume here seven horizontal rows. We call it as a call it as what we have period. Okay, 1 to 7, we want 1 to 7. In 1872, so yeah, in 1872, he is showing only the horizontal, so in 1872, he is showing only, only 6 horizontal rows. Okay, and first a. What we have? Vertical columns. Okay. You may observe in your NCRT, it is already given last 10 NCRT. Okay. We did it without even. We have to discuss. Okay. So see, these are one of the first characteristics. Now see, second, vertical columns. Vertical columns, we call it as a what we have? Vertical, vertical columns. We call it as a what? Groups. Okay. So how much? One to eight groups at that time. Whenever Mendeley uh, started his work, sixty-three elements were known. So at that time only how much? Eight groups. Okay. Up to eight groups. Now here we can write as a third. Third. Except group A, each group is divided into two subgroups. Except, yes, except group A, each group, okay, each group is divided into two subgroups. Okay, so that, that subgroups is designated as capital A and capital B. Okay, so we can write as the word subgroup capital A and subgroup capital B. So see here with that, in subgroup, say subgroup A, subgroup capital A, okay. So in that with a normal of representative element. Normal or yes, normal or representative elements. We can call these two elements what? Normal or representative elements. See this subgroup B. See. See with us subgroup B, we can call it as a what? In that transition. With a transition elements. Now, four, four point, four characteristics. A group has a organ, has a branch in between three states. Whatever our eight group, eight, eight groups has transition elements. Again, transition elements. And in three states, each containing in 
three six each containing is how much three elements. Okay, so you have to mention this. You have to mention in your notes. Okay, so one more here important part. Importance of Mendelian periodic tables. Okay, so let's say here importance of Mendelian periodic table. These are what simple characteristics of Mendelian periodic table. Okay, simple characteristics of Mendelian periodic table means you may observe in your NCRT or at the time of lecture I will share that image image also. Will be better okay, for understanding. Say importance of Mendelian periodic table. Say importance, importance of Mendelian periodic table. So here is what will be the importance of Mendelian periodic table. We can say here systematic study of elements. First, we can write the word yes. What we done? Systematic, systematic study of what? Systematic study of what we done? So many people, the first scientists who arrange the known elements into groups and periods. Understood. So Mendeley was first scientist who arranged the known elements into groups and fields. So very much important this importance of Mendeley periodic table. Okay, so second, you can write better here second. Correction of doubtful atomic masses. Okay, see. Correction of Doubtful atomic masses. So here, what will happen? See, correction of doubtful atomic masses. So already I give you uh, one chart also up to from atomic number one to atomic number twenty in classroom only. Okay. For example, hydrogen atomic mass one, then helium uh, four, lithium seven, beryllium nine, boron eleven. Like that, I gave. Okay, so what at that time we do? Correction of doubtful atomic masses. So that we will discuss here. So what he done say? The Mendelian corrected atomic weight of various elements. For example, say beryllium. For example, what we done? Beryllium. So beryllium was as a as a atomic mass of how much? Plus. Thirty point five. Okay. Understood. As an equivalent is what? And its uh, equivalent weight. How much? Four point five. Now, as you know, we have here formula of this atomic weight. Now we can say the atomic mass. Atomic weight is equal to what we have here. Equivalent weight into valency. So at that time, what he done? Equivalent of see how much equivalent weight did done? Yes, four point five. And valency at that time, valency of what? Three of that beryllium. Now what we are writing? The valency of beryllium is two. So see at that time, so four point five to three. So you will get what better answer here? Is obviously the answer is what you have 13.5. So, therefore, here at that time, beryllium was atomic mass, means assigned as an atomic mass of 13.5. But now, at that time, what will happen? Beryllium atomic mass 13.5. Okay, so it was placed between carbon and nitrogen because suppose here. How why they are placing carbon and nitrogen? Carbon what? Carbon atomic mass 12 and nitrogen what? 14. So yes, your beryllium must be this between because beryllium how much? 
Thank you very much. Take care. Stay safe.